Hey, New Hope family, friends, so glad that you've joined me today. Excited to be able to take some time to look into God's Word, be encouraged, be challenged by what God says about how we look at life and how we pursue life. So uh, thankful for uh, being able to be in church this past Sunday, and what a great time, what an awesome experience to see uh, so many of you there. Uh, Pastor Brian had an incredible word as he talked about Barnabas and being an encourager. Uh, one of the things that was really encouraging in my weekend was the opportunity on Saturday morning to be part of the, the drive through pickup for communion. We got to see Pastor Weaver and I spent two hours, 10 to noon, on Saturday, and we got to see so many of you that we hadn't seen uh, for quite a while driving through to pick up communion, to join us online for communion on Sunday. What an incredible time. And just great to see all of you, to spend some time visiting with uh, most of you and being able to pray with you about different things. Uh, was the highlight of my weekend. I know Pastor Weaver as well. Uh, just so thankful for an awesome church with great people who love and give and serve and do so many things so well in what God has called us to do. Uh, you're an awesome church and so thankful uh, to be one of your pastors and to be part of uh, an incredible congregation and excited to see what God has in store for our future. Well, today I want to talk to you about the great adventure of living a life devoted to following Jesus. By definition, an adventure is an unusual and exciting, typically hazardous experience or activity. The life that God intends for us to live is nothing less than an adventure. It comes at great risk and significant cost. Jesus said this in Luke 9, 24. He said, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. Jesus calls us to live a life of unimaginable adventure. We're not here in this life to merely exist. When we make the choice to follow Jesus, we move from existing to living and really living. Jesus is the door into this new dimension of living and the adventure that follows. Jesus said this in John 10, 9 and 10. He said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. I want to talk about choices, but I want to start with talking about moments, moments of time. Moments move in a timely manner and time waits for no one. It may seem to be the case, but time never stands still. And another thing about time is that we've all been given an equal amount of time. We all have the same amount of time. A moment is small enough to ignore and big enough to change your life forever. Our lives are the sum total of what we do with the moments that we are given. The divine potential of a moment is unlocked by the choices that we make. That is the key, our choices. The choices you make open the doors of possibilities and potentials that lie ahead in your future. God created us with the power to choose. He created us in his image, and as a result, he gave us the gift of free will. The power to choose is probably one of the most spiritual activities you will engage in. Many of us have compartmentalized that from the spiritual into the practical everyday living category. Our list of spiritual activities includes things like worship, prayer, Bible reading, meditation. Those elements connect us to God and prepare us for living. But our choices chart the course and determine the destination of our lives. Let's look at Adam in, in the beginning of Genesis. Genesis. Genesis chapter two and three, God created man and woman and place them into the garden, a garden full of choices. This is what it says in Genesis 2, 15 to 17. It says that the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. In other words, the garden was full of endless opportunities for joy and pleasure. Adam could choose from the countless number of good trees, and he was free to eat all of the fruit he wanted from this endless supply and selection available to him, with one exception. You see, God stacked the deck for Adam. Every choice but one was the right choice. There was only one wrong choice available, and he ended up choosing that. Like Adam, we chart our course and navigate our journey with the choices that we make. Our choices either move us toward God and all the pleasure and joy that comes in Him or steers us away from Him to a life of shame and fear. This account tells us that while Adam was hiding, God went on a search for him. 
This is the hope that we have, that even when we get lost in a jungle, God in his great mercy pursues us and invites us once again to join his adventure. In Deuteronomy 30, starting at verse 11, God spoke this to his people. Now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It's not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven and get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea and get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you may obey it. It seems to me like God is a little bit sarcastic here. It's like he's saying, don't use the fact that you don't know what to do as an excuse. And don't even think about telling me that it's too difficult and that it's beyond your ability. All you need is right in front of you. In verse 15, he goes on to say, See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands, decrees and laws. Then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, then I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed and you will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call on the heavens and earth as witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him for the Lord is your life. Basically, God is pointing out that there are two different paths which lead two opposite directions. He's very clear in pointing out that one road leads to death and the other path leads to life. He further clarified so that there's no ambiguity here. The Lord is your life. No excuses. The options are clear. Your journey is determined by something as simple as a choice. God gives us three very powerful words that will literally change you. And he says this, now choose life. He gives us the answer. Put away the baggage from your past. Shake free from the fear of the future, which is unknown, and seize the moment. Would you join me as we pray? Father, I thank you that you have given us a free will, that you've given us the opportunity to choose. And today, I pray that each and every one of us, with given this choice, that we would choose life and know that you have blessing, purpose, you have a plan, you have uh, so many good things in store for your people as we look to you and trust you. We choose you today. We choose this day to serve you. And, and, and every day uh, moving forward, God, we choose you and your plan and your purpose for our lives. I ask you to bless your people today. In Jesus' name, amen.